The women gather around Lisa Strata and ask her why she has brought them here. Lisa Strata first asks the women if they would like to have their husbands safely restored to them from the war. Kleenik immediately tells Lisa Strata that she would like to have her husband home for he has apparently been gone for the last five months. Marine and Lampito agree that they too miss their husbands. Marine complains that since the Milesians revolted she hasn't even been able to buy a masturbation tool from the open market and is desperate for sex. With such apparent enthusiasm, Lisa Strata asks if she can then have the support of the women to end the war. Lampito, Marine and Kleonik all brag of the great feats they would accomplish just to end the fighting, but when Lisa Strata finally tells them that she means to end the war through the evocation of chastity, the three women refuse and cry out, on with the war. Kleonik, Marine and Lampito tell Lisa Strata that they would be willing to do anything but give up sex to end the war, and even offer to walk through fire. Lisa Strata is outraged at her peers and tells the women that they are the stuff of heroic songs about women that the women are playing out their stereotypical sex-driven roles. After more rousing, the women finally agree to Lisa Strata's plan. Lisa Strata explains that the women should powder, primp and make themselves look as attractive as possible so that the men will want them desperately. She says the women will refuse sex with the men until a treaty for peace between Athens and Sparta has been signed. Lisa Strata also tells the women that the Acropolis, including the Temple of Athena, will be seized by women later in the day to prevent the Athenians from using the money from the treasury for the war. Lisa Strata calls a policewoman over and tells her to turn over her shield so that the women can sacrifice a sheep on it and swear an oath that they will follow Lisa Strata's directions and make peace in Greece. Kleonik tells Lisa Strata that the women cannot make an oath of peace on the shield and suggests that they might slaughter a jar of Thasian wine instead. Lisa Strata agrees and the women bring in an enormous jug of Thasian wine. As if it were an animal for sacrifice. The women remark that the color of the wine is a beautiful shade of blood. Lisa Strata prays over the wine and then elects Kleonik to take the oath on behalf of the rest of the women. Lisa Strata recites an oath of chastity and each line is repeated by Kleonik. After the oath is recited, the women drink the wine. As the women pass the cup, loud sounds are heard from offstage. Lisa Strata informs the women that the sounds they hear are the women taking the Acropolis and announces that the citadel of Athena is theirs. Lisa Strata and Kleonik hurry off to help the women at the Acropolis. Meanwhile, the chorus of old men is led in from stage left. This group of rather aged and decrepit old men carries wood and earthen pots of fire to smoke the women out of the Acropolis. The Karyphios of men encourages the men to keep going. Swifty. A leader one of the groups of men, struggles to sing a song to set the pace of the group. The first semi-chorus of men joins Swifty in song and adds his own laments of the pains of matriarchy. The second semi-chorus also joins the singing and tells the story of Cleomenes, the Spartan, who briefly occupied the Acropolis in 508 BCE. As the men progress towards the Acropolis they blow on their earthen pots of fire which give off great clouds of smoke right back into the men's faces. As the men work with their fiery pose at the gates of the Acropolis, the chorus of old women, carrying pitchers of water and led by the Karyphios of women, approaches. The chorus of old women is quite old like the men, but lively. The first semi-chorus of women urges the women ahead in song and is joined by the second semi-chorus of women. There is a considerable inconsistency in Lisa Strata that may possibly be the impetus for the two-plot structure employed by Aristophanes. Men away from home would not be affected by a sex strike stage by their wives. The women complain to Lisa Strata that their husbands have been fighting away from home for years, but their wives refusing sex at home miraculously affect these same men. Thus, Aristophanes' fantastic tale is somewhat faulted and inconceivable in real life. As critics point out, even if the men were home for the sex strike, they would have certainly made use of local prostitutes and other means of pleasuring themselves. Aristophanes ignores these issues in favor of comedy and the sight of men with enlarged and desperate felices at the conclusion of the play.